Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots and today I'm answering some of the most asked questions I got about Xtool Studio. So if you're brand new to an Xtool device or you've only been using Studio, I would go over to my previous video giving you a walkthrough through Xtool Studio. It's pretty comprehensive, you'll learn a ton. This video should then be watched. If you are an Xtool XCS user, stay here. I'm going to be sharing some tips, some tricks, and some answers to some pretty commonly asked questions. So first, I like to make sure everybody knows what version we're on. If you go up to the Xtool Studio menu, click About, you can see I am on version 1.1.9. If you'd like, you can check for updates as well, and it'll tell you if you have the most updated version or not. I'm going to show you one section of the video will be different for the pinpoint positioning versus cameras. It's a very small difference, but I think it helps. You open whatever laser canvas you would like. So the first thing I will say is that we should put something on this canvas. <laughs> I'm just going to press R, hold down my mouse and the shift button, and that will give me a perfect square. You can also come over to the shapes menu and select it from there. And the reason is, is because we don't have a lot of menus unless we have something on the board. So I'm going to call this at the top, the dynamic menu. This over here is the processing menu. And when you come down to the very far left bottom, you will see layers and objects list. Go ahead and make sure your screen looks like mine. This is where we're going to start the actual tutorial and answer some questions. So the first thing I get a lot, a lot, a lot is how do I load my settings? I have a lot of them in XES, but nothing is showing up in studio and I'm logged in. So I am also using XCS at the same time I'm using Xtool Studio just because it is Q4 and we have stuff to do. We can't be worrying with things we don't know about. You can use both of these at the same time. You're fine. There's no problem in continuing to use XCS. For those of you who want to use Xtool Studio, there are multiple ways for us to get our materials inside. The first is going to uh, utilize this materials home page option. So you can see here, we have an import option. This is for the JSON file you will export. What am I talking about? I need you to go to xtool.com and go to the support, search out article 2344. Depending on your version of XCS, you can just save your XCS file to the cloud and import from there or you can export by exporting your settings, okay? And both of those are detailed step-by-step -step right here. That is the easiest way if you have a lot of them to do. Um, just follow one of those parameter uh, options. I'm gonna show you how to do it piece by piece as well. So inside here, let's say you have a project and you have unknown material. If it doesn't come up in here, you can go ahead and add it. So let's say I'm doing the Yeti thick. I'm going to add a picture. I don't like tips. I'm going to choose right here from MySpace, which will bring up anything you've saved in the um, your MySpace in the studio or in XCS. And you can just import those settings right from here. Or you can import from the JSON file, which you've exported from XCS. And that is just right here in the materials menu inside of uh, a project. The next thing you can do is right here. I got asked what this button was. Click it. You're not going to break anything. <laughs> if you click it, it just takes you back to the home page materials. So just FYI, both do the same thing. Now, the third way that we can actually load in our materials is to set our settings right here. Regardless of whether you have anything selected in material, I can come in here and say for the P2, I can cut it like 79 and 19, okay? So I can cut my plywood at that beautiful cut, nice and pretty, and then I can hit this button right here. Look familiar? So I can choose from here, let's say, what was that that I just said, plywood? Uh, yeah, black walnut and then turn off all these 
things. And then you would just set uh, 3mm X tool wall ply. That would be my naming for it. And then I'd hit submit because I already have put my settings in here. Or again, from this screen, you can hit import and do your JSON uh, upload. Okay. And then you hit submit. I have trust issues, so I don't load any of my settings in. Now I did get a question about mine is grayed out. So I'm just going to choose a material here. Uh, you can see I can't save this because it's grayed out. Little like little Ghostbusters <laughs> do not <laughs> sign. Um, and that is because it's on reference. So what you've done is you said, oh, I'm going to put in the defaults for red acrylic. For cut, it's 80 and 13. And we know it because it's in here. Now, just because you can click and select something else is great. And it goes to user defined, right? But you can actually save it if it's user defined. Let's say it took you 81 and 17. You can still, even though you have the default red acrylic as material up here, you can save it just like normal. It'll, en it'll enter it here for you automatically, right? We don't have to type it in and then you can save it. Three mil, you know, maybe it's X tool red acrylic or Smoky Hill red acrylic or something, right? You have the ability also to import from your JSON. So those are all of the three ways to import material settings from XCS to uh, XTool Studio. Did you find out if we can clear the overlapping lines automatically or automatically? If not, how do I actually do it? So I will show you with very minimal explanation how to do it. I'm going to copy this. I have auto snapping on, which is just command or control R to turn that on and off. You can see I'm going to make this a different color to make it easy. Why you want to do this is if you have material that didn't cut through all the way, this method is going to save you from having to rerun anything. It's also going to have to save your sanity. If you have um, a, a material that needs to be cut at a specific kerf because you've measured to that kerf, you don't want to recut lines even if they're duplicated over. Now, why would this ever occur? Why wouldn't you just scooch it over and cut two different squares? Well, number one, it's a waste of material. And number two, I have shared that smart nesting can be your very best friend uh, in making sure you can get a whole lot of money out of your material. If you want me to do a separate tutorial on that, just drop that down below. But what our goal is, is to not have this duplicate a cut right here. It's already going to be cut from one square and we won't run the second square right here. In order for us to do that, I wanna bring back the layers menu and talk about something real quick. Let's say we want blue on top. Let's actually turn that to black so you can see it a little easier. I'm just right clicking and selecting a different color. Now, black is on top. And I want you to know that is because number one, it says it over here in your objects list. And number two, where that overlaps, you can only see the black. Now, if you want red to be a priority, you would drag it up. If you are manually processing, you need to also drag the color up as well. So this color band is very important if you're processing by layer, for example, inside of the processing screen down here which we'll get to. All right, how do we do it? How do we cut out this overlap? Click one of them, go to the edit menu. This is saying computer, tell the laser to do four things. Right now, those four things are telling it to cut a full square. We wanna say, mm, uh -uh, cut whatever number you have to do, but don't cut that. And how we do that is, Command or Control Plus to zoom, hold space bar down to move the entire piece. What we're going to do is when I hover my pointer over the path, a node appears. Now remember, nodes are the circles and they are commands. Paths are the, what happens in between the commands. So this could be score, this could be engrave, and this could be cut. But the command is the actual node. So what we want to say is stop, right? here. Now what will happen is we'll say, hey, do this until you get to here, then do this, then do this, then do this, 
then do this and we want this gone. That is where our scissor tool comes in. We highlight, you can see it turn blue and you remove it. Now it will look the same here, but if you highlight and move it, you can see there's no red line there anymore. That means it will not cut that area. That is how you do it very quickly. If you want to see me do something that like didn't process or didn't recut or something like that, just let me know and leave it in the comments below. All right, so that's how you do it in a nutshell. Where do I see the order processing if I want to do it manually? Okay, this used to be three dots. Now it is an arrow. Okay, that's all. So let's say, remember I told you this was super important. If you are prioritizing one, you have to prioritize another. If you go to the processing menu arrow, so right next to the process menu is this little arrow, it'll automatically default to auto plan. And that just means these actions will happen before those actions in this order. And that's determined by Xtool. That's determined by the software. Let's say you want to just absolutely not do it that way and you want to decide, I want to do it my way. Now there are multiple ways for you to do it my way. And you'll have to go through and determine which of these is best for you. You can all together one by one, top to bottom, but you can also do this handy dandy by layer. This is what everybody loves to ask about, right? So I'm going to hover over the GIF and it's going to show you, it's going to process layers from left to right. And I had so many people ask me, well, there's no left to right. It's only up and down. Hey, it's down here. Okay. So let's say I put on a couple of, um, you know, other things on my board here. Let's process this as dark blue. I don't think that one has a, yeah, it doesn't have a shortcut. Ugh, I hate not having shortcuts. Let's do yellow. So this is not going to process um, via wherever you have stuff here. Like I can move stuff here where you think red is going to be important. Then I want black. That's not what's going to happen. It's going to happen down here in this order. So you can see that order mirrors this order. So that's why I told you if you're going to prioritize something in the layers list, you have to pr prioritize it in the uh, color panel as well. So what did I say? Red is most important, then black, then yellow and blue. Now you have it to be processing by layer. You just toggle that on, by the way. Okay. And then you can do top to bottom, bottom to top if that's not on. There's a whole bunch of things you can do, but I got specifically asked about where did my three dots go? So that is on a uh, CO2. So that one is with cameras. If you have the pinpoint positioning, you also have a framing menu right next to it. But look, this still is still right here. You just change auto planning to user defined, and then you have the same options as the rest of us. See? Okay. Let me see. That was it. I'm frustrated. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, where is the unite combine thing gone? Let's do a unite combine thing. Let's take these two pieces right here. I'm going to overlap them and remove that. So if I have one item selected, I have the particular dynamic menu. Now that dynamic menu is going to depend on if it's just an, an image, if it's a vector, or if it's text. Again, that was all explained in the first video. This, however, the question is, I don't have my options. And the answer is, you still do, you just have to choose more than one thing. So you can see only one thing is selected because I have a transform control box around one item. I also only have one item grayed out in my layers panel. If I select both of them, my transform box gets bigger. It includes both items and both are grayed out. And look what's up here. You have your unite, your Boolean functions, which are unite and subtract. Then you also have your vector compound, or uh, make vector thing because you have two items selected. Now, again, I want you to look at this menu. Oodle is going on, right? We have not only the Boolean functions, we have the make a compound vector and we have our offset. And now we also have group, right? Let's do some text. And let's say we want to combine these two pieces of text. Right now, text on its own is a very different menu. When we combine it, you can see what we have again. We have our uh, Boolean functions, we have our offset, and we have a group. 
So this is a dynamic menu. If you are not seeing things like Boolean functions, if you're not seeing vector stuff, it is because you don't have everything selected that you should. So just double select that or double check that. Or it could be you're working with an image when you need it to be a vector, all of those kinds of things that we talked about in the first video. All right, what's the next one? My settings are behaving different. What happened? Okay, so there was a lot of talk um, I don't know if it was in my group or on the videos, but there was some changes with regard to algorithms and all this stuff. Okay, first of all, your settings for the P2 are gonna be very different than the P3, full stop. P2S also going to be a little different. Those lasers become more powerful. There's also AI assist stuff in the newer material or in the newer machines. The settings are gonna be different via versus the machines, okay? Full stop, there's not gonna be any discrepancy in that statement. What the discussion was, was that the algorithm change that Xtool uses to process those settings, the answer is it's always changing. Every time they do an update, I can guarantee you they have made something a little bit better. Is it going to be something you notice? Probably not. So the majority of the time, and that's what I told this person, the majority of the time, Drastic differences are dirty equipment or material differences. And his ended up being plywood, glue, and the actual makeup of that plywood was different between batches that he was using. And another person we were chatting, uh, plywood from the home improvement store is absolutely going to be insanely different than something from Smoky Hill, for example. Even though they're both one quarter inch, they're gonna be very different. Um, so that answer, it's your settings behaving differently are gonna be due to the material you're using. It could be warped, it could need to be pinned down, or it's gonna be due to your machine being dirty. It's very unlikely that the algorithms change so much inside the update that it's going to adjust your uh, settings that much. All right, the last one, I got this one a lot. And I even got a lot of screenshots and videos sent to me, thank you. I can't get the project preview thing to work like you had the blown out design thing you showed, I got, I get an error. Is it me or the studio software? So it's probably not your computer. A lot of people were saying, oh, I'm running a computer that's too old or whatever. No, look, okay, so we're just gonna use this because it's already on the board. So you can see I have material selected, I have settings. I'm not even connected to my unit. Okay, it's not even on today but I have the preview button. The reason is because the material is loaded. That's the only answer. So I'm gonna let it load and then you can see there's the blown out design because we're cutting something. So let's say I leave my material set at 81 and 17, but I'm going to change this to unknown material, apply. Look what's grayed out. It's still 81, it's still 17, but I can't see the preview. 99% of the time, it's because you have something here, uh, a blank here. So it is not necessarily your computer. Uh, had a lot of unkind words people said about their own equipment. Promise, don't, don't beat up your computer. It could be just a blank right here. Okay, so that is it for me today. I do want to answer a question I keep getting. Shaker ornaments. You all asked for a shaker ornament tutorial, how to build it in XCS, how to make it everything. I have it done, I just don't have it edited. So here's a picture. Take this as a screen capture or whatever. So you can see there are four main pieces. Which ones get 3M? Which ones don't? Which ones need both sides? You can see over here, if you have a CO2 laser, you'll use this design. If you are using a diode and you only are using a pre-made acrylic blank, you still have to cut the wood topper so there's not a gaping hole there. You could also use flex, and if you use flex, you would cut this piece. Okay, so I am going to put that together. I just have to get some time to edit it, but screenshot this and you can make your own shaker ornament inside of XCS. That is it for me today. Please like this video, share this video, and subscribe for more laser crafting fun.